Sami Zayn threw the Intercontinental Championship into the trash, and I wish he did the same with most of the WWE TV scripts. We get so much of John Morrison versus Otis, it's getting me fat. It's like I'm overeating with these matches. Put that shit on Roman's table, it'll feed the entire Samoan family. It'll probably be good with garlic bread. You're brainwashed. Yes. What is going on people, welcome to another episode of Greatness of Smackdown. When it comes to stories, I think they're alright. Reigns vs Uso is spectacular. But why is it that we get the same matches all the freaking time? And matches that we don't even care about. As you can see, I'm not using a camera, I just feel bad today. And I didn't even want to record a video. I just don't have the energy, but then people... Then I saw Carmella being confirmed as the mystery woman. Ah! Is that... Is that Carmella? Sweet mother of Primo, I gotta make a video! I'm so excited. The show kicked off with the WWE Universal Champion, the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns. It was actually one hell of a segment. Paul Heyman is talking about Roman Reigns' family. He was about to acknowledge Roman Reigns as the Tribal Chief. But Roman Reigns took the microphone and he said he doesn't want Paul Heyman to call him the tribal chief. He wants Jay Uso to do that because on Clash of Champions, Jimmy Uso acknowledged that he's the tribal chief, but Jay Uso never did. And he wants his cousin to come out here right now. Jay Uso is all business. He says he doesn't know Reigns anymore. And Reigns showed his true colors at Clash of Champions. And if it wasn't for Jimmy throwing the towel, Jay Uso would be the WWE Universal Champion right now. I'm still thinking about Carmella, by the way. Rain says Clash of Champions was the worst night of his life. He wanted to help Jay Uso. He wanted to give him that pay-per-view main event paycheck. And look how Jay Uso is treating me. Don't you appreciate all the garlic bread I put on the damn table? Jay disrespects respected him and he embarrassed their family in Roman's eyes of course Jay Uso broke his heart what do you want you want a match again you want hell in your cell you got it but Reigns also says the match will have the highest stakes that any match has ever had in WWE history this cannot include Viagra match I just don't believe Roman Reigns thought about the Viagra match Reigns hugs Jay I love you and of course Jay accepts the challenge. This was awesome. What a segment. I love this story. I want this to continue and I hope it's going to be a hell in a cell Samoan match. How is a Samoan match? We got two Samoans and maybe some flowers. Anyway, Jey Uso gets interrupted by AJ Styles and you know, it's typical. I actually deserve that title shot. My name is AJ Styles and I'm the rightful challenger. That was the worst accent I've ever done. And AJ Styles basically says that Jey Uso is living in Roman Reigns' shadow. By the way, Roman Reigns also said, I love you more than your brother loves you. That's strong. Anyway, we got Jey Uso versus AJ Styles. It was pretty obvious why we got this match. You know, Jey Uso never actually beaten any main eventers before facing Roman Reigns. And yes, he won the number one contenders match, but we need this one on one match, fair and square, Jey Uso looking like a legit main eventer. And that's exactly what this match accomplished. And I really appreciate that. One of the highest points of the show and of course Jey Uso won the match against AJ Styles and that was basically it. This whole thing was just phenomenal, really loved it. Uh, Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso is my by far favorite thing in wrestling right now. Sami Zayn is talking about the Intercontinental Championships and he basically says that this one is not real. He blames the fans of course, but this championship is basically a fraud, so he throws that championship into the trash. Lovely, just lovely stuff. I've said that before, Sami Zayn is becoming one of my favorite superstars of all time, and I didn't even like the guy as a babyface. We got Otis vs John Morrison for 1,537th time. You would expect this match to be at least long, you don't want this to be long, but you're like, okay, I mean, Otis is gonna win, so at least give John Morrison a longer match. Well, nope, John Morrison lost the match, they're treating the guy as a joke. I mean, John Morrison and Otis. Is there any single human being who prefers Otis over John Morrison? Yeah, whatever, John Morrison lost again. I don't, I, I wanna see his record. Can someone tweet me his win-loss record? Since returning to the WWE, I really want to see that. We also got Shorty G vs. Sheamus for 2 millionth and 537th time. It was fast, Sheamus won the match. 
Yeah. We got the Kevin Owens show on SmackDown because we got this brand to brand invitation rule in the WWE. So he was talking to Alexa Bliss about how she changed and she basically says the fiend, oh, the fiend is so beautiful. Sometimes I just want to suck his, he's so great, you know, uh, when I look into his eyes, I freeze, I get wet because of all the sweat, you know, um, I just want to f*** him, that's right, I just want to f*** the fiend, if I'm being honest, completely honest, Kevin, if I'm being completely honest, Kevin, I just want to f*** the fiend, and we also got the fiend attacking Kevin Owens, so it's actually been confirmed, we're getting Kevin Owens versus the fiend next week on Smackdown. I mean, that's gonna be the first Fiends match on television, if I'm not wrong. And I, I don't think why... And I don't know why we're getting this. I mean, Kevin Owens is already in a rivalry. What's what's the point right here? I, I don't know. Hopefully, Kevin is getting drafted to SmackDown, I guess. As far as Alexa Bliss and The Fiend, I don't know. I think it's alright. I think we need more transformation in Alexa Bliss. But I don't see where this could benefit anyone if i'm being honest i don't mind it i hope it's gonna be good but so far i just don't see a lot of possibilities we got corbin cesaro and nakamura versus riddle dorado and metallic which is basically a toilet break dude i hate everything about this match whatever the babyface team won and yeah i barely watched this one didn't care if i'm being honest carmela ah carmela it's carmela Wow, why she looks so different now? We got Sasha Banks challenging Bailey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. You know, just as much as I do, when it comes to both of us, you don't stand a chance, bitch. Oh no, she used the B word. Oh my god. And we got the Intercontinental Championship match. Jeff Hardy vs. Sami Zayn. During the match, Sami Zayn removed the turnbuckle and they basically tried to hit another with it. The referee was like, you know what, I'm just too lazy to fix it, whatever. Uh, the match was actually fine. I'm enjoying Jeff Hardy's current run in the WWE and especially Sami Zayn's run as the Intercontinental Champion. The rightful, the only, the undisputed Intercontinental Champion. Very good. Lovely stuff, Sammy is amazing, and it's crazy how when he was with Cesaro and Jinsuke Nakamura, I got so bored of the guy, but all of a sudden, he's one of my favorite acts on SmackDown. Uh, the finish was, well, just as expected, Sami Zayn outsmarted Jeff Hardy, and he won the match. That was basically it, Sami Zayn is your inter continental champion by the way next week on smackdown we're getting the first night of the wwe draft so that's gonna be interesting i don't know i might make predictions i might uh, make a video on who should be drafted i'm not quite sure but anyway people smackdown was okay in my opinion i mean if i'm being honest it's the show that i enjoy the most because it's not long it's easy to digest and like i said i'm currently really enjoying jay uso versus roman reigns the great one peace love and hugs it's been a pleasure